they are coming to um, launch their uh, manifesto um, on, on the 22nd of January, which I, I, I'll also send out to, to members. It was, it was on Twitter that you could you could attend that, and that might be something that um, that members would like to, to attend. Um, one of the things I want to focus on for the current year um, for, for our staff, and that was um, on, on, on uh, part of the report, which is about capturing the lived experience of children in poverty. And I think it's quite right that we that we, we do that, that we try and capture the lived experience of, of youngsters in poverty, because it's it's understandable, as we know, that, that it's not been quite what we expected because of, of, of COVID. But I think, you know, moving forward as, as we as we move out of the pandemic, that um, we really do need to do that and to continue to listen to the voices of, of those young people. It's absolutely essential, in my view, um, because they're going to be the ones that are going to help us to put in support mechanisms to, to keep them, um, um, you know, uh, influencing actions that that, um, that are part of their lives and to tickle to, to um, tackle some of them. Um, of, of that stigma that uh, Councillor uh, Jennifer Stewart mentioned in her speech. So it's it's those youngsters, particularly the, the vulnerable and the disadvantaged that we need to focus on, in my view. Um, so taking, taking more of them out of poverty, um, encouraging their aspiration, encouraging their opportunity. And I, I would hope that across the council that we would um, aspire to do just that. That's pretty much what we now. Thank you, Councillor McDonald. Um, do you have anyone else wishing? Oh, Councillor Henriksen and then Councillor Graham. Um, thank you. Oh, sorry, just adjust the camera. Um, thank you, convener. Um, I'm really disappointed um, to be having to go into debate over this report. Um, I think um, it was previous, it's already been previously mentioned that this report um, does not include anything to do with COVID. And we have a further report coming in the future to, to, to cover the, the, the um, effect of COVID on, 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 on poverty, on childhood poverty. Um, it, it's a very good report. And, and I think a, a, a lot of some of what people have missed is that this report has actually stated that the amount of poverty has actually fallen during this period. Now, it, COVID has pro the, the, the situation with COVID has probably um, uh, definitely upset that progress. And I think that's only to be expected because it is extraordinary circumstances that we're living in. But poverty um, with children has started to fall, probably not as fast as we would all like. Um, and that just shows you that the measures that are being put in place by the council and by the Scottish government are actually starting to have an effect. It might not be as quickly as we would expect, but it is working. And it's really disappointing that on the back of that small success that we appear to be having, um, the Labour group have actually brought in um, the question of independence. Now, they say that work isn't being done. Now, I'm just looking at the moment at um, the uh, Tackling Child Poverty Second Year Progress Report, which was published in August. Now, work is being done. You just have to look at the, 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 the in addition to the Scottish um, child payment, which has been brought in, there's the Best Start Grant, which is probably bringing to uh, over a thousand pounds for the first child. Um, the Best Starts Food Program, which gives incredible amount of support to those living on benefits. Now, convener, I think we should get behind this report. And I think by adding all of these um, additional amendments, uh, this motion by, by, by the Labour group takes away the, the success that we've actually had. And Councillor MacDonald, <coughs> excuse me, was talking about um, the success that the Labour government actually had in reducing child poverty. Yes, they might have had success in doing that, but that has been totally wiped out by the Tory austerity that then came in on the back of that. So we, we, it's all very well um, 
saying things like that. And if you want an, an, an indication on, on, on childhood poverty, you just have to look at what's being done by the UK government at the moment and their, their, their policy in providing for, um, meals for, for children during the COVID. And the the, the woeful situation that that's been put in, where they're having to be um, told what to do by by a, a, a footballer. Thank you, Camina. I just think it's really, really disappointing that um, the Labour group uh, are, are, make, are trying to make political um, points on a report which shows a small income, a small bit of its success, and has actually very little to do with, with the COVID. And we'll look at the, the impact of COVID going forward. Thank you, Convener. Thank you, Councillor Henriksen. Councillor Graham. Thanks, Convener. And I'd just like to support Councillor Dunbar. But most of all, I'd like to thank all the people who work on our behalf to try and address child poverty to ensure that our bairns have the best start possible. And I think sometimes it can seem a thankless task at times. Yes, we have seen small wins. I've actually witnessed small wins. I've seen people down in Middlefield, say, if it was not for the lights, and the project, that they wouldn't be far the war. So you can see the small wins. But again, we've heard that the Scottish government, we've heard that that the Scottish Government are still investing significant funding towards closing the gap, towards improving poverty, but they're not building capacity within the system. It's, I think it's just paper and all the, the over the cards. There's just quick fixes, and it's not providing a last, lasting solution, and that's the biggest problem. There is a report that says, yeah, there's been an improvement from 22.8%. 21. Well, I don't think I'm only celebrating that one. I think we should be doing mayor if we're investing all this money and in, 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 in producing poverty. Another thing that we will need to consider that in which I read, and, and I must admit, I can't remember which means I've read it in because there's not much reports here. But children in the, the lowest decibels are the Scottish index of multiple deprivation that also suffer as our illnesses in which we can see they suffer additional support needs. You can see that doing it middle of the middle field now of James's school name. And we can see it at Hillary Burn, we could see in our schools all around the kids need additional help. But we didn't offer them enough help. We didn't offer them a future. And I don't believe they've got anything to, to look for forward though. All we've got is generations of poverty. I've known grannies and grandas, but I've known that then their kids are still poor and now their kids are still poor and we're not getting out of it. I think time after time, year after year, the poor in society are failed, failed by a society that puts more on greed than in need. And to be quite honest, and I will be political here, the first priority is independence for the country and the independence for its people. And that's a sort of probably political bit done, but I think as a committee, we need to ensure that we receive it an oversight of what progress is being made in an attempt to reduce child poverty. And I think it is important that we see, receive a half year, yearly report on the options being taken. The report does go to the community planning partnership, which is enough to come across to us. Sorry, I'll be back on the political again, but I think my Scots friends could be set doing. I think at the end of the day, we need to go and write to the UK government. I think it's unthinkable that the 24 not left to university, universal credit will be cut in April. It's currently planned. As doing so, we put hundreds of thousands of more children into poverty. Families across the northeast need the government to confirm that it will continue now. We need to tell Boris, get off your bike and let's get food in our bairns' bellies. Thank you.
Um, Councillor Lumsden. Yeah, thank you, uh, Convener. Um, just like to uh, start by uh, saying that I actually agree with Councillor McClellan in something he's he's uh, he's he said. You know, I think he said this is um, you know a very serious and uh, real issue, and I, you know I completely agree with that. And that is why I think, as a committee, that we should do everything we can to try and address it and tackle it. And, you know, for, for me, if it comes down to writing to the UK government, I don't have an issue with that. You know, if, but this is why we're, uh, I'll be supporting the, the motion that has writing to the UK Chancellor in there. But I'll also be, I also feel that we should write to the Scottish government um, as well. And it, it's, it's telling that the SNP group have just removed all reference to writing to the Scottish government because they all feel that they're doing the, the brilliant job and there's no asks there because what we see from them is their normal uh, slavish devotion that they will, they can't write to them and, um, and and ask anything. But, you know, for us, I think we should be doing everything we can for our people of Aberdeen and whether, that, you know, we should write to anyone um, that, that we, we need to uh, to get that case across. And it shouldn't... We shouldn't be scared of of writing to um, a, a government if it's going to upset them. If it does upset them, then that's that should be um, um, tough, really. The um, <laughs> but we do sort of vary slightly as as the other things he'd said. I think he'd said something about uh, the first minister. You know, she's just getting on with the the day job. I think the day job nowadays seems to be self publicity, trying to get a, a selfie with you know Ursula or or maybe dealing with the Alex Salmond uh, uh, case. I'm not quite sure, but our focus isn't seem to be on the running of the the the, the country properly, and it's not on certainly not the focus on on child um, poverty. Um, I think it was uh, Councillor Nicholl mentioned the clues in the team. I wasn't sure if it was Audrey Nicholl or, or Alec Nicholl, because um, he was obviously we heard him in the background as well talking about closing the the attainment gap and and the the, the successes they've they've had there. But um, I haven't seen much success in in that. And if anything, I can see the the opposite. I see that gap widening due to the failures they've had over the last thirteen years. Um, Councillor Radley brought up about, you know, what the, what we needed in Scotland was more uh, social um, powers uh, devolved to the um, to to Holyrood, and I'm just looking up. There was actually, I think it was 11 uh, benefits uh, devolved. Um, I think it's about five years ago now. Um, still not all devolved. The Scottish government still can't take um, take them on, and I think that's not going to be fully devolved until uh, 20. 24 so uh, a big delay there so it's it's maybe a bit rich asking for more powers when they can't even deal with the ones that they've already got this is from a, a party who said it would only take 18 months to set up a, an independent scotland um and you know i think it was also mentioned about you know trying to we should be working with the scottish government to try and improve the situation and that's exactly why 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 we're, we're writing to them but you've got to remember, they have had 13 years um, of running this country. And, you know, if, if they want to, if they, if they see any success in a, you know, a 1% reduction after 13 years, then I think that's a, a, a pretty hollow victory. You know, I think they should be doing much, much better. And, um, you know, if, I, I hate to think if they're in charge for any more years, um, the, the damage that will be be caused. So um, I, I fully support the uh, the motion that's being being put forward, and uh, you know I fully support writing to the the Scottish government, fully support writing to the UK government because I think as a committee we should be doing everything we can, and we should be uh, worried about upsetting some of our party colleagues in, in other places. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Councillor Lamson. Do we have anyone else wishing to enter debate? No. Um, okay, we go to summing up. So, Councillor Yule. Thank you, um, convener. Um, an interesting discussion. Um, we seem to find ways to disagree even when we substantially agree on something. Uh, very sad. Um, 
can I again thank Councillor Radley for, for seconding me? Um, it, it, it is what to take the positives out of the discussion. Uh, we're all supporting and welcoming the action report. It's an important document and it's a shame it's somewhat been overshadowed by a, a political ding dong. Um, we all agree that government should act. Um, just sadly, we can't agree which government. Um, I, for one, would believe both governments should act. Um, in terms of uh, colleagues' remarks, um, I thought I don't, don't think I disagreed with the word Councillor Macdonald said, although she did forget to mention that the, the, um, the government in Scotland uh, was for eight years was, of course, a, a coalition and not just the Labour Party. Um, but her points on child poverty were, were well made and obviously heartfelt. Uh, Councillor Hendrickson uh, made um, good points, and you know, particularly on obviously um, the UK government's complete failure on the food packs provided to children uh, who would normally receive uh, free school meals. Uh, Councillor Graham spoke about the Scottish Government um, focusing on quick fits and not lasting solutions. Well, I have to be honest, convener, I'm all in favour of quick fixes and lasting solutions. They're not, it's not, it shouldn't be an either or. Um, uh, and, but but Councillor Graham also made an excellent point about generations of poverty and uh, somebody who suffers, a uh, child who suffers uh, poverty um, is disadvantaged for their whole life. Um, and that is shameful. As, as I said, when I, I moved my amendment convener, uh, child poverty is a, is a national shame for all of us. and We should all be doing more to tackle it. It just shouldn't be a thing in a country, whether that's Scotland or the UK, but in a country as wealthy as we are. Um, I hope, convener, that upon reflection, members will decide that they should unite around the Liberal Democrat Amendment as a position of consensus where we can all go forward together. Um, I fear that won't be the case, but I, I do encourage you all to think carefully. Thank you, convener. Thank you, Councillor Yeo. Councillor McClellan. Thank you, convener. Um, th thanks for that. Th there's obviously been a lot of discussion in and around the, 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 the amendments to the report, but, and, and I echo what Councillor Yule said about, you know, we need to do, you know, child poverty is a, an extremely, incredibly, you know, disappointing thing, and we need to do more uh, to ensure it's eradicated from society. Um, but, you know, th th this politicking um, and, and playing party politics on, on this report. I, I think, you know, we've got sheer hypocrisy from our Aberdeen Labour colleagues here. It is baffling some of the things we're, we're hearing. We're hearing, you know, how supportive they are in, in tackling child poverty, um, but on the one hand, and the, and the support of the, the condemnation of some of the, the, the work of the UK government at the hands of the Conservatives, while they sit hand in hand with the Conservatives in Aberdeen City Council. You enable the Conservatives in Aberdeen City Council. You make it happen uh, for them. Th this is what we have. You know, uh, this is why you, you've been suspended from your own party, because of the actions, because of your inaction, um, you know, on issues. But at the, instead of working with Conservatives, instead of taking action, um, you know, you, you support, for example, Councillor Lumsden's mere madness idea around cutting out the Scottish Parliament and dealing straight with the Conservatives at Westminster in terms of funding, an idea which has been, you know, rubbished by the Westminster House of Commons uh, Research uh, Group. Um, you know, that this is the sort of madness that, that is not going to eradicate poverty in Aberdeen it was quite rightly shown that it would have a significant impact on, on uh, the council's funding. Um, you know, and that this is the sort of work that is not good for the people of Aberdeen. If we can pick up on some of the, some of the comments, um, you know, and, and you know, Councillor Macdonald mentioned the, the, the benefits of having uh, Labour at Westminster. Well, it certainly won't happen while you support the Conservatives in Aberdeen. Councillor Graham, uh, mentioned generations of poverty. That generations 
um, is certainly not the work of the SNP. While they've been in power for a large part of my life, they've certainly not been in power um, well, well, any longer than since 2007. Um, so, so I don't really know who is trying to blame blame for that. It would have been the, the Labour Party um, or the Conservative Party. I didn't really know where he was where he was going with that. Um, but you know what we have here before us with an incredibly important report, um, which has been you know rubbished with party politics. Um, mentions of research here, research there, uh, and trying to make a scene ahead of an election by Aberdeen Labour. And, you know, as colleagues have mentioned, the Scottish Government has done a number of things um, to, to benefit the people of Scotland, um, you know, in terms of grants, funding uh, and payments to help people, uh, the most vulnerable in our, in our society, um, all while, you know, the, the, the majority of the, the financial levers lie with Westminster. The Scottish government do as much as they can while they have one hand tied behind their back. And, you know, it is the Conservatives who are responsible for universal credit at the rate it is, for, you know, not extending furlough for the issues that people face in, our, in their daily lives for... You know, that does not help people. Um, convener, I, I will stop there because I appreciate what you know we've gone round everyone on this item and we do have other items to to get on with. But you know, it is sheer hypocrisy from from our, from your Labour your Labour colleagues in administration today uh, to bring forward some of these um some of these um amendments. Thank you, Councillor McClellan. Um, Councillor John Barr. Um, we heard from Councillor Stewart about, um, you know, the stigma, the long term stigma of poverty um, and how, you know, we do want all children to live well. Um, so I don't I don't take on board that I'm rubbishing this report. Um, what I was actually trying to point out through the recommendations and through my speech was about the kind of actions that we can take um, in order to see if we can um, do better with child poverty. Um, so, um, Councillor McLennan, um, I think, as usual, is suggesting that we just pass on the problem to the UK government when the Scottish government clearly has social security powers and um, that it could double the Scottish child payment if it was really serious about the issue. Um, I agree with um, Councillor Yule in terms of this is a national shame and it is a national disgrace. Um, I do also actually agree with Councillor Nicholl and Councillor Radley that there have been a number of benefits that the Scottish Government have introduced, but we can see that in our own city, it's having a really small impact. So, it, you know, more needs, to, more needs to happen and more needs to happen more quickly. Um, Councillor MacDonald, um, you know, pointed to the fact that we've gone backwards, um, you know, despite the introduction of child tax credits, um, but she also said about how it is important locally that we do try and capture um, the lived experience of children and young people um, who are living in poverty. Um, Councillor Henriksen um, talked about, you know, that we should celebrate, you know, the fact that there's been this small success in terms of reducing poverty in our city. I don't think there's anything really to be celebrated here. I'm not rubbishing this report, but I'm saying that as councillors in this city, you know, the small um, decrease that we saw in child poverty that was up until the end of March this year, when clearly we know that COVID will be having a huge impact on families in the city, is not cause for celebration. Bairns do need the best start possible, as Councillor Gordon has said. He's also talked about his experience as a ward councillor, seeing generations of poverty living, um, you know, in circumstances that aren't, despite all these changes and benefits that we're seeing. 
Um, he's also right about how we're being failed, um, you know, by our society. And I would also agree, whether it's political or otherwise, um, with his statement about, you know, independence for the country is not necessarily creating independence for our um, people and their families and communities. And I do support the oversight that a half yearly report um, will bring. And I welcome that Councillor Lumsden um, will, you know, write or will see that there is a letter goes to the um, UK government and is keen to see that, you know, we do everything that we can to address child poverty in the city. Finally, I'm just going to say I'm very disappointed, um, you know, with um, our SNP colleagues, um, you know, that they're blaming us for hypocrisy, that they're trying to say that we're rubbish in the report. It's far from the truth. Um, we all want to see, you know, benefit for people that live in the city with families who are experiencing child poverty. We do have that much in common. Um, but the financial levers to do that don't all sit with Westminster. Convener, do you want me to proceed to the vote? Sorry, Mrs McBain, I thought I'd lost uh, the sound there. Um, yes, if you could, thank you. OK, I'll start with the two amendments. So the committee has before it an amendment in the name of Councillor McClellan and another amendment in the name of Councillor Ewell. So could members please either vote McClellan or Ewell? Convener? Yo. Councillor Bell. Councillor Yule. Sorry, Councillor Yule. Yes. Councillor Graham. Yule. Councillor Cormie. McClellan. Councillor Yule. Yule. Councillor Dunbar. Yule. Councillor Hendrickson. I'm McLennan. Councillor Lumsden. Yule. Councillor MacDonald. You. Councillor McClellan. McClellan. Councillor Audrey Nicol. McClellan. Councillor Radley. McClellan. And Councillor Stewart. You. Okay, Councillor Ewell, um, Councillor Ewell's amendment succeeds by eight votes to five, so I'll now put that against the motion. So the committee has before it a motion in the name of Councillor Dunbar and an amendment in the name of Councillor Ewell. Could members please vote motion or amendment? Convener? Motion. Thank you. Councillor Bell? Motion. <clears throat> Councillor Graham? Motion. Councillor Cormie? No vote. Councillor Ewell? Amendment. Councillor Leslie Dunbar? Motion. Councillor Hendrickson? No vote. Councillor Lumsden? Motion. <clears throat> Sorry. Councillor MacDonald? Motion. Councillor McClellan? No vote. Councillor Nicol? No vote. Councillor Radley? No vote. Councillor Stewart? That would be a motion. Thank you. So the motion wins by seven votes to one with five no votes. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs McBain. Councillor Graham, you have your hand up. I don't. Don't have my hand up. Oh, 
Hello? Can you hear that? I haven't got my hand up. Oh, it's, uh, it is on my screen, so I don't know what's uh, going on. Um, item 10.7, update on housing first. Do you have any questions? Councillor MacDonald. Yeah, thank you, um, convener. On um, page two of the uh, appendix, it mentions that um, Harriet Watt University has been commissioned to do some work um, which hasn't been forthcoming yet and um, it's expected to be published sometime in 2022. I, I just wanted to ask officers if we knew um, any more about that, wh when that might be in 2022. Um, and and um, Can, um, you know, I like, Can I just check though, that's restricted isn't it, page two? Are we really, are we still in public session at the moment? Can I just check? We are still in the public session at present. Okay, so um, I can I can hold any 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 questions. It wasn't a it wasn't a contentious one, I didn't think, but it's it's up to the convener to to do things as he wishes. Can I just? check whether we have any um, uh, questions that can be taken in, in the public session just now or whether members would prefer to go into private to consider the uh, that part of the report and then come back into public session. I've got Councillor Lumsden and Councillor Graham. Okay. Thank you, uh, convener. It's it's really a, a, a question for Ms. Dyack around the um, the funding that there's that's been in place, and just to try and work out what's actually changed that means we have a decision to take uh, today. Ms. Dyack, have you can maybe go through that? Um, yes. So the the funding was provided through the Cora Foundation, um, and um, we have had an announcement uh, just in advance of Christmas that the funding would be cut to fifty percent for the next financial year, twenty one, twenty two. Um, hence the the paper to seek officer to seek uh, elected member approval um, for uh, the, the future of the housing first program because obviously it's very important to us, city. And, and maybe I could follow up, Kamina, and just beyond 21, 22, do we have any indication of, you know, is the 50% funding going to continue or is that just an unknown at this time? At the present time, we're unsure, convener. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Graham. Hi. Thanks, convener, but I'm not quite sure what's happening because my hand's not up. All right, I'm let not me sure just if put someone it down else then. can take it down. Ah, that's it gone. Um, okay, so shall we move into private session, Mrs. McBain? Yep, thank you, convener. So what we'll do is just stop the recording just now and then you can ask the questions and then we'll start the recording again to consider the report. If that's okay. <laughs> 